Ms. Hannigan? Here. Mr. Mulner? Here. Ms. Tully? Here. Okay, at this time I'd ask that our chaplain, Tom O'Brien, uh, please lead us in prayer and thereafter pledge allegiance. Please stand. With bowed heads, let us pray. Almighty God, Father of all mankind and judge over nations, we pray thee to guide our work in this meeting. We pray for those who serve the people and guard the public welfare, that by thy blessing they may be enabled to discharge their duties honestly and well. We pray for our leaders that by thy help they may observe the strictest justice, keep alive the fires of freedom, strive earnestly for the spirit of democracy, and preserve untarnished our loyalty to our country and to thee. We pray that you guide your healing hands over our local officials after their hard-fought campaigns for public office. Now that the campaign season has ended, let us show mutual respect for each other and work together for the common good of the citizens of Macedonia. Finally, O oh God of mercy, we ask thy blessing and comfort for our neighbors who are suffering mental and physical disability. Share them and bring them thy blessing of health and happiness. Amen. And now please face the flag and join me in our Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you, Chaplain Ryan. Have a good one tonight. Okay, uh, first item on the agenda would then be, um, I believe, the minutes of our last meeting. October 14th meeting, sir. October 14th meeting. I move that we accept the meeting, the minutes from the meeting of October 14th, 2017. Second. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? Hearing none, all those in favor, to keep by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the motion is carried. At this time, we're going to entertain uh, those that would like to speak to council. We'd ask that you step forward, and the first one is uh, Vinnie Ventura. Good evening. I am Vinnie J. Ventura, 1479 Bruce. I am a council member elect. I would like to thank numerous people for this success. First, my family, especially my wife Darlene, who took this quest with me. Dar, as she is known, came out to the polls and even stood in the rain on Tuesday morning with, uh, at another location other than mine. She didn't even have my support out there in the rain to help keep her dry. I had other family members help after they got through with work in the evening. Without family, you have no support system. Next, I would like to thank my running mates, Jessica Brandt and Jan Tully. Jessica walked the streets with me, speaking with every res resident we possibly could. Both ladies kept me very optimistic. Again, as in the past, I thank the police, fire, and service departments. Again, they took a stand not only as city employees, but as residents to make it better in Macedonia. I thank them for their support. I thank Mary, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I thank Mayor Miglarini, Council Member Nick Muldar, and Council Member Kevin Bilkey uh, for seeing something in me that garnered their support and mentoring. The well wishes from city department heads who have made me look forward to working with them is greatly appreciated. Josephine, I hope you find the fountain of youth so you can stay with us forever. Your knowledge is priceless. Last but not least, definitely not least, the fine residents who saw a change was needed and have given me the opportunity to work on keeping Macedonia the lead entity in Nordonia Hills. Thank you from my heart. And definitely last, Ms. Hannigan, the people have spoken. Thank you. Okay, uh, the next on the uh, list is Roy Metzl. Roy? Yep. That's all smoke rise dive. I just want to thank uh, Vinny and uh, Jessica's in here and uh, Jan for being reelected and we got some new council members and I'm just hoping that come in January everybody's going to really work together and we're going to really move this city forward and I think that's why the people voted the way they did and that's great. Another thing. We had these terrible storms, and I see trees down all over the place. 
and I know the city's going to go around and pick them up off the tree lawns and do whatever. And the great thing about that is not one person was hurt. Out of all the trees, we had trees down in my yard and across the street and everywhere. Power is out for some people two, three days. I was lucky. I had six hours. <laughs> and that was a nightmare, just six hours, you know. <laughs> so, uh, and the thing that's coming up here on Saturday is Veterans Day. And I think that's a big thing because what I do when I'm out in the public and I see somebody in a uniform or something, especially an older person that I know was in a, probably in a ward or home or something, I walk up to them and I say, well, thank you for your service. And when I see the look on their face, that's worth a million dollars. Because a lot of these people, especially a Vietnam veteran, they came back, they got no acknowledgement. We didn't like the war, so we didn't like them when they came back. And that's insane, you know? Look how many died over there, and look what went on. So I think if you see a veteran, walk up to him and say, thank you for your service. That's the least we can do. That's it, thank you. Thank you, Roy. <clears throat> Okay, uh, first first items are the uh, pending legislation. It's ordinance number 96. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to offer ordinance number 96, 2017, for its first, second, and third reading by title only, please. Second. So, we have a motion and a second. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, the motion is carried. An ordinance amending ordinance 19, 2017, relative to the, the annual appropriations for additional expenditures of the city of Macedonia for the period January 1, 2017 to December 31st, 2017. You've heard the reading? I move that we pass and post according to law. i wait, I need to wait the 48 hour rule. Well, you do not, you need a motion to amend though. Yes. So, Right. as distributed today right because we got the new one the same okay. thing you did the last time your motion to All conform right. i'll make a a motion to amend ordinance number 96 2017 with the document that was received today second we have a motion a second to amend all those in favor indicate by saying aye aye, aye. aye. opposed motions carried now i'd like to make ask that we pass and post according to law ordinance number 96 2017 please Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? Hearing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion's carried. Next item on the agenda is other legislative actions. We have any other motions forthcoming? Yes. I'd like to make a motion canceling the November 23rd and December 28th, 2017 regular uh, council meetings and observance of Thanksgiving Day and Christmas. Second. Here we have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? Hearing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, the motion's carried. Next item on the agenda Mr. is- Mr. Mayor, before oh. we move on, I'd like to make a motion to ask for a special meeting. And um, we have a finance meeting on December 7th. I'd like to have a special meeting at 6.15 p.m. for us to have the first reading on the operating budget. Second. Second. Here we so just for some clarity, you made the special meeting at 6 o'clock. Do you want the discussion within the body of the special meeting, or are we going to have your finance meeting first? Well, the finance meeting would be at 6. And you said and you said 6.15. 6.15, right. okay. Okay, we have a motion, and we have a second to that motion. I'm a, I'd like some clarification of what we're talking about here. We will be doing a first reading on the operating budget. On the operating budget, not on the full budget? No, on the operating budget. Um, I was going to talk about this in committee reports. We're going to save the capital uh, five-year plan and really work on that after the first of the year when we have the full quorum with all the new uh, council members. Uh -huh. It's a five-year plan. It's yes. adopting not only for 18, but it's looking ahead. So the finance meeting, just again for further clarity, is for 15 minutes? Okay. Yeah, because we are still having our meeting next Thursday where we yes, talk yes, about yes, operating, yes. so I we have a sorry. full yes. meeting yes. where we can finalize the operating okay. report. Yeah. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Again, are there any other questions? Hearing none, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The motion is carried. Next item on the agenda is correspondence. If we I have, have any, none. none. Uh, Mayor's report, I, uh, as Roy has indicated and others about the storm that we had, um, you know, we, we could... Unfortunately, those winds were probably around anywhere from 70 to 103 miles an hour that came through our community. 
Um, it did obviously cause a lot of property damage. Uh, a lot of trees came down. A lot of homes were damaged. A lot of wires were down. And uh, yes. uh, that was the, probably more crucial than anything else. Thank God nobody was hurt. Somebody could have been hurt, though. I was uh, out that night myself and on Shepherd Hills Boulevard, and wires were down, and people were running right into the wires. It was, like, um, it was very frustrating, uh, to say the least. But I, I want to thank our, our uh, fire department, our police department, and our service department because um, they were overwhelmed, uh, to say the least. Uh, but they all got out there. They all got uh, their... Uh, all their equipment in order and they they were out there doing their job um, thankfully we didn't have as many fires and other problems but the, the wires being down probably caused us the most grief uh, except for one house fire up on Shepherd and and one house next to that house was probably the worst house in the city that I could see that got damaged it was two two major trees in their front yard came down and another tree came down on their garage and smashed their car and he had a Harley in the garage and it was a mess. So um, I think Twinsburg took a, a heavier blow than we did. And as I came up from Sagamore uh, on Valley View Road, it seemed that they took a fairly good hit coming up and uh, a lot of trees came down on top of wires, pulling wires down. Um, and unfortunately, I, when, I, when I refer to that one on Shepherd Hills Boulevard, um, you couldn't see the wires down. That's right. So as people were driving, they were driving right into the wires. And uh, so I stayed there for about two hours and, and, and directed traffic, if you will, and, and made people turn around and go, go back. But um, I think we were fairly prepared for this, fairly, when I say fairly prepared. Uh, uh, I think we have some work to do on some things, and uh, we are teaming up our safety forces and service department uh, to figure out ways that we can even do it better the next time something of this nature happens. So, But again, I want to commend everybody for all the efforts that were put into uh, getting the city cleaned up as well as the, the situation at hand that night. Uh, everybody came in by a drop of a dime. We don't make phone calls for a dime anymore. but. Um, but they all came in, and um, and everybody knew what they had to do, and brought out the proper equipment, and, and we got the job done. So I, I thank everybody for that. Um, Did you have me on mute? I just lost the <laughs> Good speech. <laughs> That's okay. Um, <clears throat> Really, that probably sums it up. I know that the chief's going to talk about some things about the, the preemption and other things, so I'm not going to take and make a long mayor's report here, so I'll let some of the departments talk about what they are doing. So um, we'll move on to, uh, I guess that would be uh, committee reports first. As stated, uh, we have a finance meeting on Thursday the 16th at 6 o'clock that will be operating only. And then two weeks later, I can't believe I'm saying December, but on December 7th, we will meet at 6 to finish our discussion at 6.15, have the first reading vote. Um, the intent is that on the 14th that we can adopt the operating bond. So we also had a uh, Parks and Recs committee meeting where we discussed, uh, I'm not sure if I'm letting the cat out of the bag, the new um, membership dues are going to be changing in, uh, in January. Um, we also just, um, discussed a couple different ways to attract new members to the rec center through, uh, you know, the one was, I remember, was the Girls Run program that they're currently doing at the schools, and they're looking for the younger girls to get involved with that. And, uh, and so, and then also we discussed the, the uh, locker rooms and some of the changes that are going to be made here shortly. So, very good meeting. Okay. <clears throat> no other committee reports? Okay, we'll move on to department reports. John? Thank you, Mayor. Uh, all I have to report, obviously, is the cleanup efforts that we're currently conducting throughout the city. We have made one pass around everything that had fallen into the uh, from the right-of-ways in our city trees. We were able to cut up, clear the roads, and get them off to the side. And we have three chipping units out right now. One is a rental and two we own. And also three pieces of equipment that are out that are actually picking up uh, the material with grapplers that we have and placing them in our, in our trucks. 
Um, if you can get your branches out to the edge of the street for us, you know, to help us get things along, that would be great. If you put in a single file line, if possible, with the cut ends facing out to the roads so we can grab them easier to feed the machine. Throwing them on top of each other is only gonna make it more difficult for our guys to get out there and uh, be able to get further on throughout the city. Other ways you can do this, you can help us out, you can hire a contractor, <laughs> that would be great. But uh, I understand a lot, of, uh, a lot of prices are going up on these services from, these, uh, from this event. They're out, they're out there, they're busy, so you know, it's, it's a lot of money to pay and we understand that. Also, any of the smaller debris that you have, you can always bundle up and take out with your rubbish. Um, the requirement is no longer than four foot in length and no more than 40 pounds. And you can place that out next to your can, you have unlimited trash, and you can uh, set those aside in your rubbish collection day and that would help us out also. Um, also, we, we're getting some calls about the trees that have gone down on your properties. We're trying to help out in the fronts as much as we can, but we cannot go into your backyard with equipment to remove trees. Um, we're getting quite a bit of calls regarding that. I mean, that's just something we have boundaries that we have you know, to, to a hold, uphold to. We're trying to go into the front yards of homes that when the limbs have fallen into the right-of-ways, we will address that and help out and continue on you know, to take that further into the property but we can't go into your backyards. Um, also, after all this is done and <laughs> we have no time frame, we have no schedule and we're gonna be there to pick up uh, your branches, we're getting a lot of calls regarding that. When are you gonna be here? I wish I could tell you. Uh, because of the amount that's out there, we simply cannot. We're subject to the weather right now, at this time of year, but we're, we're gonna continue on. We're working through the weekend and we're working into the end of the uh, evening hours as well. We're ending at six o'clock once it starts getting dark, so they're working 12 hours right now during the day. Um, some of the lines, we're getting calls with people with questions with your utility lines. You can call your utility provider to ask questions for them. We do not have a special number to call or a special contact that will give us the answer. We have to call just like you do. We could be placed on hold for 15, 20 minutes at a time. So if you can call your, uh, your provider to ask questions, if you notice something that doesn't look right, you contact them, they'll, they'll come out to take a look for you. And uh, lastly, I'd just like to thank the residents that have gone out of their way to uh, thank our staff. Uh, kind gestures, cards, phone calls. It, it's good to, under the circumstances, it's good to receive them. Uh, that's why we're here. And it really puts a feather in, this, in the service department's cap with the efforts that they're putting forth and really makes it worthwhile while they're there. So I want to thank everyone for the kind gestures. Yeah. That's all. John, thanks. I just want to elaborate a little bit more about the, uh, we have had a lot of homes that have lost power. And as a result, when the wires come down, their meters are shut off. Ohio Edison will not re-energize without them getting an electrical contractor out to, uh, to inspect to make sure that the uh, meter can be reactivated and, and powered up again. So what we have done is first off for residents that have suffered this wind damage, we're waiving all fees. We are sending out our inspectors from the city to do the inspection for them. Uh, so that we can get it called in immediately so that they can get re-energized knowing that they have been without power. So we, I think, did uh, maybe seven today and we did six yesterday. And as they come in, we're, we're dealing with them as quickly as we possibly can because we know they're without power. We've got people that are in homes that it's starting to get really cold. And so we're working as quickly as we can and so if there's anybody out there that needs that assistance, they need to get to us early in the mornings of each day so that we can get the call in so Ohio Edison can get out with their meters and uh, reset them and energize. So thanks. One more thing to add too, just because it kind of made me chuckle when I thought about it. We will be continuing leaf collection once all this is picked up. Actually, had somebody contact me Monday morning asking me when we're going to pick up leaves, <laughs> and I thought maybe I asked. I, said, I thought they were in Twinsburg, so I didn't you know what came out. I didn't expect to hear that. But after we're done with the branch pickup efforts, mm -hmm. we will continue our leaf pickup as well. There's probably no leaves that are in any given concentrated area right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are coming down now, but there's a lot in Twinsburg. Or in yeah, place. I bet you they blew all the Twinsburg. So. <laughs> Joe. Sure. Uh, thanks, Mayor. Uh, one weather-related item. Uh, as far as the road program is concerned, our striping contractor uh, showed up Tuesday to stripe the roads that were recently paved. Unfortunately, due to the storm debris and the cleanup effort, he was unable to stripe any of the roads. So uh, we told him to come back next week and, and try again. So hopefully next week we'll stripe the roads that were paved. 
Uh, and one other item uh, to note, some of you may have saw the article in the news leader yesterday concerning the proposed access drive from Golden Link to State Route 8. It noted that uh, seven of the 12 property owners have agreed to the assessment, and that was true at the time that the news leader uh, interviewed us. However, since that time, we've actually had two additional property owners uh, agree to the assessment, so we now have nine of the 12 okay. uh, in agreement, uh, and we're getting closer to full concurrence, so a little bit of good news there. And that's all I have to uh, report. I have a question for you concerning uh, the berms. I think uh, I sent some photographs and Mrs. Tully asked a question too. Mm -hmm. Do you have any follow-up on that? Uh, yeah, actually uh, yesterday as I was around, I stopped uh, and walked a couple different locations on two different roads and uh, the material is uh, far more stable than it was uh, when it was placed. There's no question about that. And it'll continue to, to firm up and to stabilize until it's 100% stable, just like the roads that were, uh, were paved two years ago now. So, Well, I have a question because what I saw was there were, there were tire tracks in it and all kinds of things, and it didn't look like, are they laying, is that just smoothing out somehow, or what is happening? Because well, people were tripping on some areas. Yeah, I, tire tracks, I've got to assume it's the mailman or someone who just oh, drove yeah, off the road. Oh, yeah, it'd be mail or kids on bikes or, you know mm -hmm. what I mean. Yeah. So has, when you say it's, uh, you know, more stable, it mm -hmm. still has those items in it, right, or not? I, I suppose there could be some tire tracks still in the berm, but the areas that I walked were were no longer an issue. Well, so. Do you have a specific location that we can look uh, at? Well, I, would, I sent the pictures before. I'll just go back and look. Okay. How's that? <laughs> just to elaborate, elaborate a little bit on the giant, uh, we have nine now of the 12, but uh, we have uh, <clears throat> Giant Eagle that has, I was on the phone with them today, so they're, they're basically have committed to it. Uh, we sent the additional documentation on to uh, to them again today because it seems like they, they, they always lose all this stuff. But I, I think it's very clear that they're going to go. It's the only one that we're really waiting on is now Lowe's. Um, in fact, um, I don't. I can't think of any other one outside of Lowe's. That uh, Golden Corral has not uh, agreed, but we have had well, they dialogue agree. with them in which they've yeah, indicated. They agreed to me over the phone. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're waiting on their official yeah. document. So. Mr. Gelati, I, to back to the berm piece, mm -hmm. I know that this has been a, a hot topic lately, and I had some uh, discussions about it on social media, but mm -hmm. you and I had talked, and I don't know if we said it in the last meeting, but there are some alternatives to what you can do to get that to harden up. One of them is by spraying tar all over it. Now, if you've ever seen that, and I believe they did it on Route 8. Uh, they actually did, yeah, on Route 8 uh, in the stretch north of Route 82. Mm -hmm. And if you've seen it, and, and by knowing the process, it, it gets really sloppy and really dirty, and then if you know someone drives into that or walks on it, then, then you really have a, a big mess on your hands. So that's obviously not a method that we wanted to adopt. The other thing that we could do is put curb and gutter in. And just in rough numbers, when I was talking to Mr. Gelati, what were we at, a million dollars extra? Yeah, for the seven roads that we paved, uh, you're probably looking at one and a half million dollars to curb all of the roads and add the catch basins and the storm sewers that, that go along with it. So it's clearly outside of the budget. So the, the point I'm trying to make is, you know, there are alternatives. Some of them are awfully expensive. Some are not so desirable. So what what is being done is, you know, the best method for us at this point. And obviously it's going to begin to hard up as the emulsions and the water mix together. So I know we have some spots that are bad. Um, we'll probably need to readdress those, but, but thank you for clearing that up. Sure, no problem. Angela? Thank you. I just have one item this evening, and that is to announce the city's holiday tree lighting and, and visits with Santa. Um, that's going to take place on Sunday, December 3rd at the Veterans Memorial Park from 5 to 7 p.m. So we're going to light up the park. We're going to have Santa arrive by fire truck. We will have refreshments available, and this is a free event. Um, so we encourage you to bring the kids and, and visit with Santa on that evening. Um, we also have donations from the new Starbucks in Macedonia. They're going to be donating coffee and hot chocolate. And then Giant Eagle, um, that was just mentioned, they are donating um, trays of cookies, of holiday cookies. So 
Uh, we encourage everybody to come out, and that is December 3rd. Thank you. Is there you. going to be any crafts this year? No. Uh, we do not have, no, we don't, we don't have any crafts planned it, um, outdoors. Mm -mm. Okay. That's Thank all you, I have. Um, the only thing that I have is just obviously we are working on completing the budget for 2018. Um, we obviously are going to have our next meeting on Thursday of next week. Um, so that's really all I have. I did want to mention that we had the subpoena program this past Monday uh, down in the community room from the Regional Income Tax Agency. I have not heard from them uh, yet, as of yet, how the uh, turnout was for that. So once I get the results, I'll let you know. And that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Uh, what's your name again? <laughs> uh, let, me, let me check. <laughs> Brian Ripley. Thank you, Mayor. Um, relating to the storm, we had approximately 50 calls that were dispatched through dispatch, which were direct calls for service. That does not count the numerous times we had to stop along the way or cut our way to get the calls. We had areas in Sagamore and in Macedonia that we literally could not get to until we cleared trees, even if you went around the block. Um, it was bad, very bad. Luckily, as stated earlier, there were no injuries on the night <coughs> of the storm to responders or residents. Unfortunately, we've been busy the last few days with people who are injured cleaning up from the storm. Um, <laughs> We also had a couple people fall because their houses were dark and their night lights weren't on and things of that nature. So um, I'd like to thank all of our partners, of which there are many for us. Um, the firefighters that came in off duty endured a very long night. Um, the police department here in Macedonia, Summit County Sheriff's Office, Sagamore Hills Police Department, service in Macedonia, road departments in the two townships, um, dispatchers at one point, and, and I'm sure Chief Golden will speak on this, there were five or six people trying to answer the phones and radios. Um, so it was, as the mayor stated, very much overwhelming, but handled. Um, one thing I did see while we were out, there was elected officials out in all three of the communities that the fire department's responsible for. From the mayor to trustees, um, the mayor was blocking a road as he stated, there were trustees calling in reports, blocking roads came upon citizens that had Valley View Road closed at Route 8. Okay, with the cones about 12 inches, no reflective, a weak flashlight, but that's all they had. And they were out there doing it because they cared, which is phenomenal. Um, Monday when a, it was light out and we retoured the whole area, a lot of neighbors helping neighbors. You know, somebody, somebody was cutting up a road, he apologized, he didn't have it out, or cutting up a tree. He didn't have it out of the road yet, but the road was opened because he was helping his 80-year-old neighbor get a branch off his roof. Okay, so I, I saw a lot of caring amongst our neighbors, which was very, very nice to see. So, uh, you know, I'd like to thank the community for their support and their patience. Um, this Sunday is our pancake day. If I tell you how many it's been, the mayor will laugh at me and make fun of my age again, so we're going to bypass that. <laughs> but Sunday from 8 to 1, um, donations. Um, also, starting on Monday, um, the Santa delivery bags will be available. Um, that information is on our website and in numerous other places. And then, I'd also, Veterans Day, I'd like to thank all the vets. <clears throat> That's why we're here and can do what we can do. Other than that, nothing more. Thank you. <clears throat> John. Uh, Mayor, I have a couple things. Um, first of all, um, the public very easily recognizes police, fire, and service by our uniforms, by our vehicles. Um, but I personally would like to thank Dispatch. Um, they did a fantastic job. I cannot tell you how busy they were. They are the heart of your safety and services. Um, for example, in the first hour, they answered 291 phone calls. 291 phone calls. That doesn't count all the radio traffic. Uh, in the first four hours, they answered 584 calls. It was extremely busy in there. Um, you cannot imagine how busy it is, what a zoo it is, unless you were there. Um, and, and I just want to thank my dispatchers. Uh, they did a fantastic job. At one point we had six in there and they still could not keep up. So uh, hats off to them, they did fantastic. Um, 882 intersection, Joe and I talked today. 
Um, we're talking about the turn lanes. Mayor, I know we've, we have discussed this. Uh, they're a mess again, as Joe indicated. The city is paying a company, and, and Joe, maybe you can elaborate because I, I'm not really Yeah, familiar. sure, I, I will. I, there's been some trouble with the left turn lines at the 882 intersection. Uh, as we know, ODOT paved uh, Route 8 earlier. They paved through the intersection. In doing so, they removed, paved over the old left turn lines uh, and didn't replace them. Uh, We've been dealing with ODOT for a while. They finally, oh, last night, overnight, sent a crew to reinstall the left turn lines, but they didn't install them correctly. The lines are too close together, uh, so it makes for a difficult uh, maneuver. They didn't see my plan then, did they? They, I, they did. They, they saw my plan, too. They didn't follow either of them. So a uh, long story short, I spoke with two different folks at ODOT District 4 today, so they're completely aware of the problem. It's really a safety issue, is what I told both of them, is, is the main concern. So uh, they recognize it, they're aware of it, and, and I'm hopeful that they'll correct it uh, as soon as possible before we, we have a problem at that intersection. <clears throat> Just so it's clear, the conflict comes because you have, uh, as you're going northbound on Route 8 and southbound, and when you get to the turning lanes, you have two lanes turning into uh, 82 going eastbound and two going westbound. And the common line between those two are very close. And that conflicts because you're not sure if you're gonna get hit head on. Um, you know, they have to be a full 12 uh, uh, feet lane widths or otherwise you Yeah, really it's not even close. It's yeah. not even close. No. So. <clears throat> we went through this and through this, and it's amazing that somebody can't get that right over there. <laughs> I was really disappointed when I yeah. drove through there and saw that, yeah. And one other point, uh, Chief, uh, I noted tonight um, we're going to probably have to get signal out, uh, signalization out. Uh, they're going to have to take a look at the left-hand turn onto North Bedford. It was backed up beyond the turning point, <clears throat> so when they readjusted, the, we needed more green for the turn. Well, <clears throat> I was off today, but I made some phone calls to Signal Service because Joe mentioned something to me. He sent me an email yesterday. Uh, my lieutenant mentioned something. Since the storm, the whole system <clears throat> seems to be off. Uh, it just isn't functioning as it should. It's not a result of roads closed and cars diverting. Everything's pretty much open. So I did have that conversation with them today. Uh, it, it goes everywhere from Shepherd Road, as Joe indicated, all the way to the, the uh, west end of town. So the whole system is out of kilter of some way. So I did bring that to their attention today because it, it's, just not, it's just not functioning. Yeah. So, and and the, the ironic thing is they just got it set Friday to work properly. <laughs> After about, what, three weeks I mentioned we were working on it. So Dave got it right, and then Sunday came, and now it's all out of whack. So uh, lastly... I know Janet asked some questions about preemption, battery backup, the LED infrared detectors. Um, we're getting preemption installed at Freeway Drive, South Bedford and 82. Preemption is when uh, the light detects a siren coming, it will turn the light green only from the direction that the siren is coming from. So that's being installed at Freeway and 82. We're getting uh, LED, or I'm sorry, infrared detection for traffic at the Commons set. That's the Commons, that's Summer Road. Uh, it's not uh, speed trap cameras or something that some individual indicated. Uh, it's the same thing that we have at Valley View in 82 in North Bedford. It's going to prevent the city from having to grind into the road. Uh, every year, John spends thousands of dollars replace, replacing these trips. It's now going to be basically an infrared camera that's going to pick it up. So that's all taken care of, and, and we're using money left over from the 271 project, I believe. So um, that's taken care of. I don't know if you have any other questions on that, Jan. No, I, I emphasize to them they are not speed trap cameras, as you see when you drive down Broadway from Cleveland. Those are cameras, but this really is to help our traffic control. Um, for safety, 
and ease of movement throughout the town. I appreciate your quick response on that. I would like to add, though, that we're not using $271. Oh. We're actually using the state highway fund money for nice. that. And I did the research uh, to find out that to make sure that we could actually use that along 82. No, we can't. Yeah, the question came up because the, the companies were out putting them up right after the storm. And everybody goes, oh. So you had crews like crazy fixing all the electrical. And then you have this separate entity doing it. And people were concerned that we're putting up speed trap cameras while we still have people that didn't have power. <coughs> That's not accurate. That's social media. <laughs> That's what it was. Okay. Uh, Mark, do you have any reports? Okay. I have a question for uh, Chief Golden. My understanding is we may have had some technical problems with our communications. Did we have any, and though our phones weren't working at times, is there any of that problem? We had some issues. We're trying to trace what those were. We had, our phones were not down, as um, might have been indicated. We yes. had an overload of calls that okay. the system was locked up, and some of the calls rolled over to Twinsburg. I see. We had two, as I said, we had 291 phone calls in the first hour. Understood. Uh, I had two dispatchers, so um, obviously they couldn't keep up. 911 was overloaded. All of our one, two, three, four, five, six lines were overloaded. Uh, we had dispatchers coming in, still couldn't keep up. So, so there were some issues because there were power fluctuations and, and other things like that, but the phones didn't go down. Um, there were other issues that we've talked with Patrick and, right. you know, we had some problems with access because of the overload on the system, basically. Yes, that was and, the uh, So that's part of the looking forward, what might be adjusted or what might be done in future to try We can to, look at certain things, but... Yeah, I understood. You know, we there, just, there's only so much you can do when, well, when you have a Well, true. And uh, I think, you know, I've heard nothing but praise for what the service department did and um, for other parts of the organization. So. And I think they were doing the very best. I'm just saying longer, bigger picture, we should probably be looking at some of those things, make sure we can do as best we can technically. But anyway. We, we, had, we had a <clears throat> staff meeting uh, yesterday and we were discussing those issues. And right. Obviously everything that you want to do costs money. So, yeah. uh, but we put safety at a high priority. Right. But again, to cure some of the problems, it's gonna cost quite a few dollars. So we're, we're working on it, though, so we'll, we'll get the priorities correct. Um, un, any unfinished business? Yes, Mayor. Uh, I think I speak on behalf of Council. Uh, we want to thank our safety forces. Obviously, dispatch had a, a lot to do, police and fire. Uh, myself, I had two examples where there was some elderly people that I got phone calls from that were stuck, had no power, starting to panic. And thank you to the mayor as well, getting a hold of the fire department to go check on these folks and make sure that they were okay and, uh, and got them to safety. Uh, the unsung hero that we need to identify big time here is our service department. I could tell you I live on Crow Drive and in a 500 foot stretch, I think we had seven trees down. There was no, no getting me out of my house, no, not whatsoever. So uh, I took my chainsaw and tried to chop it to get some people through because the traffic was starting to get a little crazy and people were starting to panic. But you know the service guys came out and there was one gentleman who even had a broken finger and he was you know still working and trying to do things and, and, and powered through and I know these guys are working a lot of hours and I just want to show my appreciation for that because I you know that's hard work if anyone's ever cut down a tree or you know thrown branches into a chipper that's exhausting and these guys are really really working hard and I want to personally thank you for that it means a lot to me you know for what not only my own house and property but all the other people that you have helped and I cannot believe how fast you've done it it, it is amazing I'm proud of it and, and you guys should really have that feather in your cap thank you I got a, I got a couple things to say I'm gonna do an order of how they happened um, first of all I want to send out congratulations to my cousin Laura Leiden who was the rush Lord student of the month for October um, and then I want to thank uh, not only the service department, the police and fire, but I was out driving around that night and I came across 
one of the police officers, you know, that was working and pulling, trying to pull that tree on Crow, the one that didn't fall across, I stopped and within a matter of five or six minutes, there was two adults, five kids, all trying to take this tree down out of the road. Um, when I was driving up North Bedford, there was citizens saying, hey, don't go this way. They had flashlights out, sending people down other streets. Um, and then there was actually people out cutting down the trees them, themselves that night. So, you know, not just our service department, but our, our citizens helped out tremendously. <coughs> and so I wanted to give them a, a round of applause. And then last, lastly, the um, election was on Tuesday, so I want to congratulate Vinny and Jessica um, for their first election. And Jan, I don't know how many times you've been reelected, but congratulations um, to all of you. And and I look forward to working, working with you. Yeah, by the way, I need to commend, uh, and I can't think of the last name, but it was Jason, um, was a little boy. Uh, when I was standing out there, the wires were down. His father was an electrician. They lived over on Iroquois. They came up the street. Uh, I said, you got something to tie down these wires. And little Jason, who had to be probably 10 or 12 years old, ran all the way home, got a roll of tape, <laughs> brought it back so we could tape up the wires and get them up higher off the ground. So, um, No, no, it was um, the same, same last name as the Garfield uh, wrestler that was well known. Um, Malkovich. 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 That's it. Malkovich. Jason Maplehites. Okay. Yeah. Malkovich. Maplehites. Glad you remembered that. <laughs> Thanks. Um, anyhow, that that little little guy um, really helped out. Uh, and, and then, by the way, the father and the son, after. I'm sorry. No, they they no they stayed there for uh, for a good while, and they. There was a sign that was down by Sioux Lane that was for the work construction that was going on. It blew from there all the way up past uh, Iroquois. Can you imagine how far that blew with that sign? And they ran around and helped put the sign up by the wires so that uh, people could see the wires and not run into the sign or nor run into the wires. So I want to thank them for their uh, outstanding services that night and um, someone else also did it on uh, Berkshire there was a tree down the low wire and they just put up yeah. some sort of sign to say hey don't don't drive on the left hand yeah. side there yeah <clears throat> that just brings me to thought that uh, you, you know we should have in just about all the vehicles we should have flares and and all the good stuff that you need when you have a situation like that I was not as prepared in my vehicle <laughs> by the way, but at least I had a flashlight well, one, one of the things that we are opting to change, our new trucks, our new pickup trucks are at the dealership right now waiting to be delivered, but we can't accept them right now with everything going on. We are outfitting them with spotlights to be attached to the headache racks, remote control lights that we can actually direct them for future events like this. Yeah, that's but great. We, so when we went to check on our neighbor across the way in Barkdale Laurel, three minutes from my house it took us an hour to get back but Greg was smart enough to bring our portable spotlight that plugs into the which nobody uses anymore the lighter for cigarettes and we were able to check her house and check some others we got down to Shepherd Hills and yes the wires were right across uh, the front of the car so we were able to show the gentleman who was standing there went back up to tell the fire and the police you got to block this road and no matter where we went, there were wires down. But no matter where we went, there were people out making sure others were yeah. okay. That's and then, uh, you know, they found that the only street that was open truly all the way was South Freeway Drive because there's no trees. And they had all their lights. And you get down to 82 and South Freeway, <clears throat> everything's open. So it was pretty amazing to see that the swath really went right through the heart from Eaton all the way up through to Twinsburg. And Aurora, some people, <clears throat> when did you get your power back? Me, uh, Wednesday morning, and I live in Twinsburg. It, it, you know, nothing worse, but everybody was helping everybody. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just, uh, I, I was out, uh, not on uh, Sunday night, but Tuesday all day. And uh, I will say, 
the people over in Ledge Acres, the people in many of the streets that were really heavily affected, Roseland and that, they were out helping, pulling things out. And I gather that the Ledge Acres folks, because there was some really bad damage through that area, had uh, basically been working that even uh, very early on Sunday evening through the morning even. So it's kind of a heroic effort of uh, the part of our residents, but it was such an extreme emergency. I think they should be thanked for all the work they did. Any new business? Motion to adjourn. Second. second. Motion to second. All those in favor, you can by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the motion is carried, and it's 817. 817. <laughs> <laughs>